Some animals we never hear, and we never will, since they can't speak. So most of them have found other ways to communicate. However, there are others which use a certain kind of language to express themselves. Many use everyday language to locate or recognize each other. The yelps of this sea lion pup have a specific sound, and however much surrounding noise there is, its mother can recognize the call among the hundreds of other pups in the colony. In fact, most language is fairly basic, and this exchange can be translated as follows. Hey mom, where are you? I'm starving. All right, all right, all right, here I am, I'm coming. Male and female penguins also use their voices to communicate. After several weeks of migration, here's how male penguins announce their return. A good honk, and the females pop out of their burrows. All they have to do now is find their husbands. Go on, another honk. And here's Mrs. Penguin. Oops, wrong one. Now where's he got to? Ah, there he is. All's well that ends well. After the language of recognition, we move on to the language of warning and admonition. Defending its dinner, this little Tasmanian devil expresses its anger at its father. Roughly translated, that meant, hands off my grub. Fearsome, screeching growls, which unfortunately for the youngster don't have much effect. And quite right, too. No one speaks to their father like that and gets away with it. Among the cacks, respect for territory and hierarchy is expressed by language and by the occasional fight, of course. The vocalization of the dominant male is very quickly mimicked by the rest of the group, which wastes no time in seeing off this unfortunate visitor. Clear off or you'll get what's coming, briefly sums up this exchange. And the message seems to have been understood. Animals that live in groups generally share a common language. Unlike its cousin, the dog, the wolf doesn't bark. It grunts, growls, and above all, howls. A howl that can be heard over a kilometer away, which averts the rest of the pack to the presence of prey or mourns the death of one of their own. <coughs> Creating a dreadful cacophony, flamingos prattle non-stop during their nesting period. They emit a kind of nasal growl, which comforts the fledglings, but which can become much more piercing and strident when it's necessary to warn the rest of the flock of approaching danger. The bleeding of sheep is easy enough to understand. It's a group language that tells the flock to stick together and the lambs to stay close to their mothers. Perhaps it also explains why sheep always seem to do the same thing at the same time. And finally, the last word goes to the dolphin. Dolphins use nearly a hundred different sounds and ultrasounds, which are audible several kilometers away. They possess the most elaborate language of any animal in the wild. While evolved animal species do have an everyday language, they also use different forms of language in particular circumstances. During the mating season, for example, certain animals express themselves in astonishing ways. To inform does that it's high time they started making babies, the stag bellows, a raucous and powerful roar provoked by a strong desire to mate. <coughs> the
the serenade of love songs we hear on spring evenings signals the start of a very active wedding night for frogs. It's by inflating the air pocket in their throats that male frogs manage to produce their mating croak, a honking cacophony that no female can resist. Before crocodiles begin to mate, they too make a kind of music. Strange rumblings, a little like a drum roll, which cause vibrations the length of their thick skins, which promise females happiness and lots of baby crocodiles. Family life also has its own language. Everyone knows the non-stop, ear-bending screech of newborn chicks, especially their mothers. Roughly translated, it means, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. All right, all right, all right, that'll do, I heard you. Up in the mountains, when danger swoops in from the sky, it's time to warn your pals. Marmots whistle. Hurry, hurry, everyone, take cover. And thanks to the lookout's whistling, they all managed to escape from the hungry eagle. When they're upset or angry, leopards, like all big cats, snarl, growl, or roar. But when they're content, they purr like a pussycat, a way of expressing affection and reassuring the cubs. While we've seen that animals can speak, they also know how to sing. But this, too, is a specific form of language. During the birthing season, the song of killer whales, like that of all cetaceans, resounds for kilometers under the oceans. An incredible variety of sounds, akin to certain musical instruments, which allows calves to know exactly where their parents are. Birds also sing, and don't we know it. The day begins with the dawn chorus, a concerto for beak and feather by Mother Nature. Don't worry if you miss it. There are repeat performances every day of the year. And finally, to conclude our festival of natural music, for your pleasure, the Song of the Manatee, one of the rare freshwater mammals that knows how to sing.